My name is Patricia Rosmus. I'm a design system lead at Brainly, the biggest online learning community in the world. We are still a relatively small company, but at the same time, we make product that is used by over 200 millions of users in 35 countries, which interestingly creates tensions in development. I will tell you how making a design system looked like in this environment. Today, you will learn, obviously, how development of the design system looks like and how we solve the idea to the business. I will also talk about design principles and our famous design system tools made in Brain, and about the structure of our teams, actual buy-in across the company, and about design system secret sauce that makes it all work. Hope you will be able to use some of those insights in your organization. Let's get started. The story begins in 2015, uh, when our developers made first comments to bring the open source style guide. Unfortunately, it was one-sided and designers used their own UI kits, which after some time resulted in problems during implementation. Our designs contained elements that were older or newer than those in style guide. So after two years, our implementation process started to look a little like this. Does this pink and look familiar to you? During the handoff, both parties had to make decisions if given elements should be changed on the designs or on the production. Developers were often unable to make the product look like it did on mockups, uh, and it was tiring for both teams. Or even for the stakeholders who didn't understand why the final product differs from the prototypes they accepted. So it was a problem. Seeing those problems, I made an inquiry about our team's work with the style guide. All members of design and front-end teams participated in the workshops, during which everyone uh, could share their biggest problems and prioritize them. We ended up with a bunch of post-its that described our issues. And there it is, our biggest problem. <laughs> the workshops confirmed that the biggest issue is lack of shared libraries and logical structure in them. We decided we have to address this, and started working on the design system with the shared language between the teams as a priority. After some research, I came up with this. You see, Brainly design system needs to focus not only on the product, but also on marketing. It's not so common, but in our case necessary, as we didn't have a marketing team. Uh, this kind of work is done by our community managers and they are not designers. Strange, I know, but this is how we roll and still manage to get that growth. Imagine that. So to help non-designers design for Brainly, we needed also libraries, guides, and templates uh, for marketing initiatives. In details, it looked like this. Uh, we have brand in the heart of the design system uh, with all elements you would find in more advanced brand book. Uh, the guidelines and patterns for product and marketing emerge from the brand. Uh, this is how our design system is actually built now, but before we did start, I needed to sell the idea of the design system to the business, and it wasn't easy, as some of you might know. This was typical reaction when I said those mysterious words, design system. Nobody knew what it was. Uh, today, it is much easier, as design system became an industry standard, but then they were not. One of the main selling points was the quality of the product and its consistent branding uh, that now are more important than ever. In today's digital world of social media, users become brand ambassadors through their fields, for example, and they have more impact on its popularity. Advertising agencies are becoming more and more supplementary in the time of this digital and social revolution. This is the model that Brainly chose, as we don't use TV ads or outdoor advertisement, but rely on the product itself. So having a design system was quite appealing to the business. Second selling point, and even more convincing, was the fact that without shared language between the design and front end, we were losing money because we were in so-called uh, design and technical debt. Uh, and it was increasing with every implementation. We not only produced unnecessary code, but it was slowing us now. Uh, we didn't get full business support then, but rather a cautious one with limited time for developing our shared language. Shared language, easy, right? Actually, it wasn't easy, nor trivial. 
we were super lucky to have front-end genius on board, Konrad Zwinel. He spent some time uh, getting to know Sketch and found out that this tool has open file format. So he, as a programmer, con could understand it and play with it. He thought, if Sketch files are JSONs, maybe JSONs could be Sketch files. Maybe I can translate HTML to Sketch. And he did it. Of course, he started small from a simple rectangle export, and it took us weeks to make the complete usable tool. HTML Sketch app was giving us a chance to export entire style guides to Sketch library. Colors, text styles, symbols, all with proper naming so that both teams can not only start building from the same components, but also call them the same way. Here is how the style guide exported to design library works. The designer can make a design in minutes. And remember, it's all consistent with the style guide. Also developers seeing the names of text styles and components uh, in the handoff can implement it very quickly. And finally, the product will look like on mockups. Creating shared libraries will cost you some time, but it surely will repay. We weren't able to use it then, but as it was open source tool from day one, other companies were. It was a little frustrating, uh, but also amazing because to our surprise, the tool had some media coverage, for example, by Smashing Magazine, Protopy, which put Brainy on the merging of design and development timeline, alongside Airbnb, Webflow, and Google, we were stunned to see that HTML SketchUp was used by companies like Seek, Yelp, and Drumroll, Microsoft, which was quite shocking considering that our tool was made by a team of three people, or actually one person, because Conrad did most of the breakthrough work. At the beginning of the work on our design system, brainy design principles were defined. The whole design team participated in a workshop where we tackled areas that are the most important for us to achieve better quality of our product. Then I wrote down the principles with a pencil mnemonic in it. So the first letters of our principles form the name of our design system, pencil. Every principle has also a short description and a question uh, you should ask yourself when thinking if the principle is fulfilled. Every principle has also a short description and a question you should ask yourself when thinking if the principle is fulfilled. Uh, later, we made cards to help us work with them and give structured feedback at our design critic meetings, which by the way, are named Sharpener. If the principle is fulfilled, we are putting the field outside on the table. If the principle is not met, we put empty side on the table. Obviously, uh, working with those cards is kind of difficult during remote work. So one of our interaction designers, Maciek Nowak, created their online version. It works like that. In the meantime, our developer, uh, Patricia Radaczynska, who was also co-creator of HTML SketchUp, finished working on the first complete export of the, our style guide. It became our basic design shared library uh, used by all designers, and we could start refactoring elements of the system. This is a good moment to tell you a few words uh, about our process. We created a circular process to keep those shared libraries up to date in the future. This is how we roll. Uh, here you can see our basic tooling. First, the designers make mockups in Sketch, uh, then we use abstract for handoff, then the code is made and sent to GitHub. Next, designers export the newest version of the style guide as a Sketch file, and we override the old file uh, with a new one on Google Drive. From that moment, all designers have an updated version of library uh, when they open their sketches. And this circle of life, how some call it, uh, goes on forever. This and other processes and the whole uh, design system documentation are kept on our confluence. Later, we migrated part of it to the public domain, but I will tell you about it later. We had the export and the process so we started audits and refactoring. First textiles, then layout, spacing, colors, buttons, input labels. 
almost all elements uh, had to be tested in A-B testing uh, because everything is tested uh, at Brainy. So it took us quite a long time. On this slide, you can see our team grow. Brainy hired interaction visual designers and after that, we grew some more. Let me tell you how the structure of the teams changed over time. In the context of working with the design system, we divide members of teams into system contributors and its users. From the design point of view, at first we had only one official contributor, me, and a few product designers working in different product teams. From the beginning, the product teams were cross-functional. Uh, they had product designers, front-end and back-end engineers, analysts, and of course, product owner on board. Uh, by the way, this is just a scheme. Uh, our product teams have a lot more people than four. After we hired more designers to the design system team, or core team, if you will, uh, we were not only making design system, but also supporting all product teams with the UI. At that time, we still have fewer interaction designers than product designers. And then we grew more, and also uh, new product teams were formed. At this point, uh, interaction designers were transferred to product teams, but they were still main contributors uh, to our shared libraries. In product teams, interaction designers work hand in hand with product designers in the model we are calling two in the box. In this model, designers work on the same features, but they are given different perspectives and have different responsibilities. For example, Magda's job uh, is to satisfy key needs of our users and to create uh, solutions that will meet business goals. She also documents the development of our product. Maciek supports Magda by visualizing the ideas and adding delight uh, with interactions and animations. He is also an advocate of the design system in, pro in the product teams. Uh, so he's making sure that there are no custom solutions and if necessary, he makes new components and documents it in our design system. But the common goal of those pair of designers is of course, making the product that people love. Coming back to the design system story. We migrated hermetic uh, documentation from Confluence to Zero Height with a sexy address designbrainy.com. Brainy people love this. And then uh, we gained an actual buy-in across the company. Why? Well, uh, one source of design tool was finally easily accessible. All teams, not only product teams, could find their resources like styles, present presentation templates, uh, illustrations. We also became visible by design and dev communities. All that gave our leadership confidence uh, to invest in the area. And we finally got budgets to hire developers for the design system team. And we also got the yearly impact award from the rest of Brainy employees. That kind of recognition for design domain was unusual and needed. On this slide, the beautiful design system crew celebrating this fact. And this is the uh, secret design system sauce I was promising to reveal. The secret is dedicated people and treating the design system not just as an isolated strict set of design rules and components, but as a thing that connects people, designers, developers, and everyone else. It's also good to have a lead who will keep the fire burning, but lead is, lead is nothing uh, without the people. And solitary models of design system just don't work. With increased motivation, we continue work on shared libraries of atoms and began uh, working on design libraries of bigger organisms and pages. Then COVID happened and our plans had to change. Uh, we couldn't build our team as fast as we would like to. And we focused on working with supporting developers from product teams. We started making the foundation for design system on mobile uh, with logic for stuff like uh, dark mode delivered by Dina Sabat, our interaction designer. But as Brainly has very smart people on board, even in these difficult times, our team was able to deliver something awesome while developing the product. Uh, one of our engineers, Bartosz Lorek, with the design support of David Lewandowski, created the tool that gives designers full control over making lightweight uh, production-ready animated SVGs. 
So after HTML SketchUp, we had another tool by Brainly, SVG Animate. And like HTML SketchUp, it was open source and free to use for all. The tool was used to update our homepage with a juicy animation of Brainly community. On our Medium, uh, you can find an article with details like this comparison of similar tools. This might be a game changer also for your team as the animations, as I said, are light with better control over your vectors. You can even use Puppet Work tool in Illustrator. With the new tool at our stable, we are planning to make a system for illustrations that can be easily animated to delight our users. And still there is a lot of educating to do to connect all brainy people for design and to make quality that students, their parents and teachers will love. Olga Vesopal, our visual designer, is design system main educator, but the whole team is doing it as well. We are brainly, we love educating. And that's all from me. Thank you.